Solar subclass usage in Destiny 2 is not very high right now. Dawnblade and Sunbreaker specifically, they're not doing so hot. Let's talk about Dawnblade first, starting with their exotics. We have Starfire Protocol, Wings of Sacred Dawn, and Sunbracers. I actually really like what they did to Starfire Protocol for Destiny 2. It really has a more powerful effect now. Getting Rifts back instantly with a fusion kill is really strong as an effect. But that is more of a utility effect. It doesn't really make you feel much stronger than you usually are. You compare that to stuff like Raiden Flux, Actium War Rig, Orpheus Rig, and Starfire doesn't really make you feel powerful. There's not much of a power fantasy with dropping rifts, whereas there is with those other exotics. Next are Wings of Sacred Dawn. Now, the perks on Wings, again, doesn't make you feel more powerful. They let you do a unique thing, sure, but that thing itself doesn't make you more powerful or make you feel it either. That's fine though, we have plenty of those exotics. However, what this exotic does have is synergy with the top block of Dawnblade, Attunement of Sky. Attunement of Sky is a block of perks that revolves around aerial combat, and this exotic synergizes with that very much. We have a couple of issues though. When locked in air, as I showed in the Warlock tier list, your shots are still not 100% accurate, which is pretty annoying. Then the other issue is just about aerial combat in general in Destiny 2 and how RNG dependent it is. We all know that aerial combat in Destiny is inconsistent at best. Sometimes you get a lot of shots to land, sometimes you get barely anything to connect. What you might not know is that aerial combat is intentionally crippled. This is because Bungie wanted to intentionally lower the skill ceiling so that better players aren't using the vertical space in Destiny to shoot the crap out of low skill players. So, you have an entire subclass block devoted to aerial combat despite the fact that Bungie also intentionally cripples aerial combat. Okay, not to mention that, at least on the PvP side of things, putting yourself in the air in the way that Dawnblade might require is generally not a good idea, as it's very easy to predict movement, and Wings of Sacred Dawn will literally halt any movement. On top of all that, when you're using Attunement of Sky, your super does not last very long at all, only about five swings, which makes it feel less impactful than other supers. Dawnblade also has Sunbracers, which to be fair, make your Solar Grenade one of the highest damage grenades in the game, and the highest for Warlocks. But Sunbracers aren't really the game changer in terms of a power exotic. The gameplay you're seeing is just me doing regular strikes, which aren't really too challenging. So that does make it seem like this build is actually pretty good, and I mean, it's not bad or anything but when you're doing the pinnacle level content, you can't really get away with the things I'm doing in these clips all the time. Just floating around, aiming in dumb spots, jumping up and down for kills. It's somewhat reckless play. I also told my team to let me take the lead and for them to sort of back off. The average team probably isn't gonna be doing that at all, so this gameplay is even more biased, and this is on PC where it's going to be easier to use Attunement of Sky and Sacred Dawn. The other block in Dawnblade isn't too egregious with its perk selection, but it is heavily weighted with regards to using your super, and Dawnblade itself can feel a little awkward to use at times. Getting your super in Destiny 2 takes a bit longer, there's no exotic to buff it, Dawnblade specifically, or speed up its regen rate, and, in my opinion, supers have similar issues that they had in early Destiny 1, where for a while, Supers just didn't feel very lethal in difficult combat. They felt very weak. It takes an entire Fist of Havoc to kill one major in a Nightfall, as an example. We do need to look at the other subclasses, though. What makes them so special over Dawnblade? Well, for PvP, Voidwalker is very desirable because of Devour, which is a strong tool to have, not to mention the shutdown capability of Nova Bomb. For PvE, Stormcaller's long-lasting super, even if it's not very strong, is easy to use, along with Arc Souls being a nice damage accomplice, although they're not as strong as people make them seem to be. Both of those subclasses also have exotics that make the subclasses or supers feel better. 
Crown of Tempest rewards good ability usage with more abilities. Skull of Daira Hamkara rewards good supers. Dawnblade just doesn't have that thing that makes it appealing for a certain activity. I mean, it has a thing, it's just that that thing takes a lot more effort to make work, requires you to play an intentionally weakened playstyle, and doesn't have the payout, nor does it have a game changer exotic. I think giving Dawnblade a more powerful exotic would be one of the better things to do to help it out in the short term, on top of boosting Dawnblade damage or increasing the duration of the super. Perhaps adding a thermite grenade effect whenever a swing of Dawnblade lands would be pretty cool for PvE. Sunbreaker, on the other hand, is maybe not as bad as people make it seem, but with pulse grenades as strong as they are, combined with the fact that something like Ward of Dawn is not really that good, there isn't much reason to use anything other than Striker if you're trying to do the most damage possible. On top of that, Striker has insane synergy with the top block of perks and insurmountable Skull Fork. So the thing that is already really strong on its own is even stronger thanks to Skull Fork. I do expect to see nerfs to Pulse Grenades sometime soon, despite the fact that they don't even do the most damage on a grenade, at least in PvE. They're just too easy to use and do insane amounts of damage, and no, I don't think that everything else needs to be brought up to its level because then everything else would be insane, and while I think some things need to be buffed, not everything does. Man, I really love going on tangents. The top block of Sunbreaker ramps up your super capabilities a lot. Hammers exploding, doing AoE, it's actually pretty good. But the issue is that you only get five hammers at the most, which isn't that exciting. It feels like your super is over before it even starts. I know that it's good for the baths encounter in the Leviathan to kill the sensors, which is nice, I guess, but just having that one specific reason isn't good enough. The bottom tree is actually pretty cool. I really liked Sunspot Generation as a concept in Destiny 1, and I still like it in Destiny 2 as a concept. Plus, Halifire Heart, while sort of disallowing you to use your super, provides even more of a benefit to the Sunspot build. The root of the issue, in my opinion, is that Sunspots aren't really mobile. They force you to stay put or to stay in a very small area. Now, I get that part of the build is so that you can chain your kills together, moving from sunspot to sunspot, but being locked down, having to stand still, isn't the most fun, especially when you're using your super. There are only a few situations where it's not bad to just stand still and chuck hammers, especially since you can throw up to nine hammers with the sunspot build. The game moves so fast, Things die so quickly that standing around in a sunspot is almost a waste of time. This is why something like swords in Destiny 1 were so good in strikes. You would move so quickly that you just wouldn't have time to use anything else. If you're in a strike and you're not doing any sort of lockdown based event, you're just not going to sit in your sunspots. Part of what made the Simmering Flames perk, aka Hallowfire Heart, fun in Destiny 1 is that 1, it didn't require sunspots, and 2, you regenerated your grenades insanely fast. Faster than Destiny 2 with sunspots. When you have the torrent modifier active in Nightfall, yeah, it's really fun, but you also don't even need the sunspots. Again, going back to Halifire Heart, when combined with sunspots and mods, you do get your abilities back really quickly, but as soon as you use your super, the benefits go away, and using your super is fun. You're watching Nightfall with Torrent gameplay, so in this, the build can seem pretty insane. A lot of ability usage, a lot of sunspots, so it's all good. But again, this is with Torrent active and with my friends letting me take the lead on kills. If you aren't getting kills with your abilities, this build is very crippled because there's no on-demand way to get a sunspot without requiring an ability kill or using your super. It requires very good ability usage, but it doesn't reward it in the exact same way that something like Crown of Tempest does. And again, in higher-end activities where it's harder to get ability kills, that makes the sunspot build more difficult to pull off successfully. You need to put in a greater amount of effort to make it work compared to other subclasses, which would be fine if the payout was better than something like double pulses with Skull Fort, which it's not. 
The last thing you want to be doing in a prestige raid or a prestige nightfall is running into a sunspot generated in a field of dudes. But then I suppose the argument would just be to use the other block of subclass perks, which is fair. There are a few options for beefing up any sort of sunspot build. Your hammers gain damage the longer you stand in a sunspot. Maybe something where your sunspots can grow in size as you stand in them longer or get more kills in them to give you a little more roaming room. Maybe something where you pop your barrier and you spawn a sunspot to solidify the whole lockdown theme a little bit more. You get some on-demand sunspot action, which would be pretty nice. I feel like Bungie's very free right now to overextend on the PvE buffs at the moment, especially since the impacts would be very small on PvP. Well, the barrier thing might be a little bit strong, but otherwise, I think that kind of stuff is alright. Gunslinger, on the other hand, isn't bad at all. It's one of the better PvP subclasses. Its orb generation potential is very high for team play. Celestial Nighthawk, as an exotic, gives a cool power fantasy that's actually effective, and I'd say the only weak link in Gunslinger is probably Six Shooter, but even that is potentially getting buffed pretty soon. Dawnblade and Sunbreaker just need some little tweaks here and there to bring them up to par. An exotic here, a buff there, and I think they're going to be in better shape. Attunement of Sky is unfortunately in a place where, in order for it to be really good, Bungie would have to revert changes that they purposefully implemented to prevent high skill players from dominating the Crucible, and I don't see them reverting those changes anytime soon. Again, I don't think this is a horrible subclass block, but it needs to be a little more worth it in order to be used at this time. That's what I got for you guys on Dawnblade and Sunbreaker. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating is appreciated. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.